Hi, welcome back to another edition of the Forts Athletics Life and Coaching Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Inferna. We're at Forts Athletics. We equip coaches and athletes with the tools they seek out in order to achieve their unique and specific goals. This is going to be part two of the previous episode where we're talking about high school athletics and high school throwing and just the dynamics and like what's happening. So just kind of recap, if you will, I was able to uh, watch a high school meet this past weekend. It took an all it took me longer to drive out there and home than the actual competition, which is awesome. In the middle of well, I guess it was late afternoon, and. Uh, working with uh, a group of high school throwers, one in particular that competed this past weekend. It's at a personal best in the shot put, uh, finished fifth, seated 12th out of 16. So lots of excitement there. Seated second in the weight, finished second in the weight, but just had some difficulty. Um, with kind of trusting the technique. Uh, it was a Highland Games, similar technique, one turn throw. Uh, holding the weight with both hands kind of like this if you see that um, so we did learn to turn we should got some two two and three turn throws in and the interesting part uh, after the meet and talking about this was um, you know thrower fouled his first throw fouled the second uh, got a mark on his third reverted back to old technique as I was told and then um, followed the fourth fourth round throw. So there's a couple weeks until like the sectional slash state qualifier meet. Uh, so in uh, section and class of this particular um, group of athletes, uh, he is the top ranked thrower by gosh, you know, like seven or eight feet. And in the back of my mind, I'm kind of thinking, okay, how can we best set up technique to not only have you know a decent performance, um, win, wants the PR, uh, and have a chance at qualifying for for state championships. So state championships are they take the top uh, it's like three throwers. Oh, let's get that here. They take the top three throwers and. Um, You hit a certain mark, like 55 feet, and you finish third. You still go to the state championship. So anyway, so we're really far away from that. But in two weeks, with some decent technique, adding a turn, it's definitely realistic. It's a possibility. So, so in talking after, I'm talking about you know what happened there, and and wanting to um, you know just get a mark and being concerned about fouling out. And it, it just got me thinking more so yesterday. Uh, Derek Whiskey posted this great uh, message about taking takes glaciers a millennia to reach an ocean, uh, but us as individuals want to try and push that glacier back up the mountain in an afternoon, and we often fail at what we're, what we're trying to accomplish due to impatience. And it's interesting because patience, much like focus. I think it's something that you can learn. You can emphasize being patient more or uh, taking your time with things. And I think one of the ways to be able to do that is having realistic expectations about what you want to um, like accomplish and things, right? So if you want to set a personal best or if you want to win or you know whatever it is have a plan one and how how to get there and just from observing at this high school meet it does not seem like there's much plans at anything it's uh it's grip and rip two turns if we can actually do two turns um if that uh kind of like wonky technique for the most part um, but really nothing to, I don't know, nothing really to write home about. Uh, if you're a decent sized thrower, male anyway, and you have decent footwork, you can throw 50 feet with a 25 pound weight without having like real great technique. Now 50 feet, I mean, it's good, I guess, if that's like the, the standard for high school. 
original records out here for guys are 70 feet. So 50 feet, it's a good mark. Uh, but if you really want to get to that, like upper echelon of the opportunities of going D1, probably got to be closer to 70. So uh, section five record, 70 feet. Uh, thrower that was in our club. Section six record is over 70 feet. So basically all of Western New York is covered on the men's side. And then the women, I don't know. I don't know if anyone will get close to Monique 6610. It's a state record, number two all time. Uh, so it's kind of like what we're working with out here. So for the most part, the, the athletes they have coaches that have a, a fair sense of what's happening and have a good idea or philosophy of technique or have a technical model. Those athletes are going to perform fairly well. And then you kind of like trickle down into the smaller schools where you have maybe from like the bigger schools where there's like four or five, six hundred kids in a class. You trickle down to the schools that I work with for the most part where we have 30 kids in a class. Um, not that there's not as much to choose from, but the model might take a little longer to implement and come to fruition. So especially if there's nobody that's interested in throwing. So anyway, so having a plan and trying to figure out like what exactly you want to do and sticking to it. So being deliberate with what you're focusing on in practice. So uh, one of the things that I found interesting from last week was I was, uh, I, I give one or two cues, doesn't matter who it is, Lewis, college athlete, uh, high school thrower, and uh, one of the throwers was like, well, what else? And I was like, well, I was like, let's let's try and get these two things first uh, before we go on to the what else. Um, then I explained, you know, really we can only emphasize or focus on, you know, one or two things at a time. So rather than try and do everything, let's just do, you know, you know let's just try and clean up two things. And uh, it went better than expected at, at practice. But then at the meet, I think sometimes, and I see college athletes do it all the time also, sometimes, sometimes all the time, depends. It's kind of like revert back to what feels most comfortable. And uh, that comfort level or feeling comf comfortable grinding out a wind in two turns, it might lead to like some short-term success in that particular meet but it's not really gonna help us in the long run if if we know where we have a plan that we wanna take, you know, two winds and three hammer comp turns with the weights to help us get ready for outdoor. Uh, sometimes, and this is just my opinion, you give up a meter or two uh, to focus on something else and see what's gonna happen. And um, Lewis and I did that, actually I've done that with a couple of college athletes uh, coming back when they wanted to have some bigger bigger seasons uh, was okay f figure out what we're gonna do so Lewis wanted to toe turn we know three turns in the weight wasn't gonna get him where he wanted to go so basically what we did was um, we did a uh, sling start toe and one for the first meet and then we transitioned to um, wind toe and one sling toe and two uh, toe and wind, um, tried some toe and threes with the sling. So, but we picked meets where we would feel comfortable maybe not having as great of a performance. And I think at the high school level, you could do that as well. Now it's championship season. So really it, it, you might sacrifice technique for throwing far, but uh, you're only able to maintain that level of peak performance for X amount of time. So the high school level there's really like four weeks in a row where there's like championships uh, it's tough to maintain that over the course of a month let alone for a professional thrower uh, for a high school kid it's kind of difficult uh, so we'll continue with that conversation in another episode uh, I want to try and keep these ones a little shorter with the Forts Athletics uh, Coach's Car Chronicles uh, podcast uh, so this was the part two growing the high school level. Thank you very much for listening and have a great day.